Raz, do you need to share something before I start? And welcome, Rebecca. Thank you, thank you. So guys, uh, hopefully you enjoyed the session of Rory about Power Apps for Kids. Um, so now we are doing a session for slightly little more bigger kids or just adults. Um, let me share my presentation. So welcome. Um, I am going to introduce you to Power Apps with my Power Apps uh, 101 session. Uh, before I start, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Rebecca Albers. I'm from the Netherlands. I uh, work as a technology consultant uh, at a Dutch Microsoft partner or more international Microsoft partner because we're also active in other countries in Europe. Uh, I work at Macaw. Uh, besides that, I'm a co-organizer of the Dutch uh, Power Apps and Flow user group. And since uh, the end of last year, I'm a Microsoft Business Applications MVP. Uh, my focus area usually is Power Apps, but it's more uh, of also more of the other tools in the Power Platform, except Power BI. I don't do much Power BI. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm from Netherlands, so I'm a Dutchie. Uh, other things to know about me, I'm a book nerd. I read ferociously. I'm a lover of all things unicorn, as you can see. And my household consists of two cats and one husband, including my, and obviously myself. So perhaps 101, taking your first steps into building Canvas apps. So my session is for beginners. So you want to start, but you don't know where to begin. Uh, the goal of my session is that at the end, you have a general grasp of what Canvas Apps is all about, and you have an inkling of where to start. So um, my agenda is fairly simple. What is Power Apps and how or where to start? This is not a, a course. So um, I just give you enough information for you to actually begin building apps because you will not learn Power Apps by listening to me. You will learn Power Apps by actually building apps yourself. So uh, let's have a look at what is Power Apps. So I like to present this with a little story. Let's imagine there was Excel and PowerPoint, and they met each other at some point in time. And guess what? They fell in love. And at some point, they got a kid. Well, that's a good, uh, a good example of what Power Apps, Canvas Apps is all about, because it's a mix of, of, of features that you're familiar with from PowerPoint and Excel mixed together to enable you to create apps. Power Apps is all about building and consuming solutions for web and mobile. So you build it once and you can use it from all kinds of different uh, uh, user interfaces. And 
there is uh, uh, a whole lot of um, uh, sophistication going. So you can start easy, like on the, the left side, uh, building custom forms on SharePoint. Um, then you can, if you if you're used to that, you can go more advanced by build your highly customized apps, and in the end you can make it very uh, immersive uh, solutions. Also having things like model driven apps integrating with Power BI stuff like that, but that is not where you start. So. Um, the reason I show uh, usually show this uh, slide is uh, there is a story behind it, but I actually don't show it because of uh, the story of the slide. I just uh, show that this is something you can actually do with PowerPoint, you know, but um, so I need to share my uh, slide differently than I'm currently doing. Sec. Because I want you, I want to show you uh, what is going on here with uh, with uh, uh, the animations in this slide. So let's go forward. So let's have a look at animations of this slide. Animations. Champagne. So there is somebody who took a long time creating this slide. Look at the amount of animations that are going on. Well, if you start building PowerPoint slide decks, you don't start here. So the same goes for Power BI. Power apps. You don't start with the very complex power apps. You start with something similar, uh, simpler. So just that's just an advice up front. Start simple and build out your skills, and then go for more sophisticated applications. Power apps is part of the Microsoft Power Platform. So it's the it's the one uh, platform that gives low code platform that has a range of applications from Power BI, Power Apps for creating applications, Power Automate, and Power Virtual Agents, um, and making use of the common data service, uh, data connectors, and AI Builder. So there are three types of Power Apps: Canvas Apps, Model Driven Apps and Power Apps portals. This session is all about Canvas apps. So if you want to know more about model driven apps or Power Apps portals, please have a look at the agenda because there are sessions specific about these types of applications. Canvas apps is um, the applications you build with Canvas apps are usually with the user experience in mind. You have a WYSIWYG designer, what you see is what you get, and it's really great for building task and role-based apps. And also it allows you to combine lots of different data sources. So it says here 200 plus, but in the meantime, it has grown to over 300. Model-driven apps and uh, Power Apps portals, on the other hand, need the common data service as a back-end back uh, data source. So Canvas Apps is all about connectors. You have your data somewhere. It could be SharePoint, it could be SQL Server, it could be maybe Office 365 Outlook or an Excel on your OneDrive. If there is a connector for that, you can connect it. And even if there is no connector, if you have a colleague who knows how to do custom coding, they can create a custom connector for that. And also to connect from on-premises data, that's possible using the on-premises data gateway that is also available for Power BI. If you create Power Apps, you go to make.powerapps.com. This is where you end up. And this is actually where you go if you click on the Office 365 link uh, with the Power Apps logo. 
There are a couple of ways to start building your first app. You can start from scratch. That's actually the first option you will find on this page. But usually that's not where you start if you, if you build your first apps. You start, for example, with data. So maybe you have a list in SharePoint, an Excel file in your OneDrive, a SQL Server database already available, or a common data service database. And another good way for your first apps is to start from a template. The templates really help you to quickly create apps for pre-built apps for a specific scenario. And they also are really helpful if you want to learn to understand the, more of the concepts. There's somebody with his microphone on. Can you please mute yourself? Thank you. The first thing you do if you build from scratch and the first thing you will do in the near future is you have to think about the form factor. So is your app going to be used on a tablet or a PC or is your app going to be used on a phone? Let's have a look what happens if you start from data. So you pick your source. In this case, I chose the common data service. Next, you choose the table that is part of the common data service. In this case, I picked the accounts table. And an app is pre-built for me. What this app has is three screens, a browse screen that lets me browse through all the data that is inside of the accounts table that I chose. A detail screen showing some of the details. I can add more to them later. And an edit screen letting me edit the actual records inside of the table that I used. So with these screenshots, I always showed you some parts of the Power App Studio. Let's have a look at the Power App Studio because this is where we actually create apps. On the top of the studio, there is a ribbon, very familiar if you work a lot with Office products. And very important, on the upper right, there is a play button uh, that allows you to preview your application while you're working on it. So what you will, other things you will find in ribbon are quick th uh, shortcuts to alter some of some layout stuff in your applications adding custom actions uh, and viewing some other elements that are part of your application. On the left side, there's the tree view. The tree view allows you to navigate through all the elements that are part of your application. So you see the screens and you see if you, uh, you can um, um, fold them out and then you see all the controls that are on the different screens that are part of your application. So you will work a lot with the tree view when you create apps. Sorry, guys. So next to the tree view, there is a list, a, 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 a hamburger view that you can uh, uh, draw out. There are a couple of options. You can choose the tree view. And next to that, there is an insert menu, item, data sources, and advanced tools. So the insert, that's where you will find all the controls that you can add to your uh, application. And under data sources, you will find all the data sources that are currently added to your application. In the middle is your canvas. That is, this is where you see the screen you're currently working on. Um, and basically, it's what I already said, it's WYSIWYG, so what you see is what you get. This is what your app is actually going to look like. On the right side of the screen is the properties pane. That will show the properties of the control currently selected. So currently, I have selected the screen. Here it will show me the properties that I can update for 
this screen. For example, change the fill, so the color that is showing, add a background image, and do some other stuff with this image. Let's have a look at the building blocks. I already mentioned a couple of those. The first, first thing you use when you create apps is controls. Controls are basically the UI building blocks. Think about screens, drop downs, text boxes, labels, uh, icons, images, shapes, whatever you need to make uh, to build the user interface. The next thing you will work with are properties. Properties are every co control has a specific set of properties that you can use to update the working of the control or how the control looks like. And next to that, you make use of formulas. Formulas you use to building the logic and uh, the actions that will be done, performed by your application. So let's dive into controls. What I will not do is go through every control available, because as you can see, there is a whole list of controls. What I will uh, do is point you to documentation of Microsoft, because they documented every control available in Canvas apps. Uh, I will share uh, a link to that later on. That will really help you if you go to that documentation to understand what a specific control is about. Uh, some of them are pretty uh, straightforward. You see a checkbox, for example, that is a checkbox. So you can use it as a checkbox in your uh, application. Let's have a look at properties. So properties are specific for controls. You find the properties pane on the right. So when I select a certain control, and in this case, I selected an icon control uh, that has a right, uh, that shows a right arrow icon. And if I go to the properties pane, I see all the properties available, uh, re, uh, often used for this control. For example, I see what type of icon I want to show here. So I could also show other types of icons like a plus icon for adding stuff or uh, a save icon or uh, whatever. Um, you see all kinds of properties. For example, the X and Y property that determines where on the screen your uh, control is located. Uh, things like size, coloring, rotation. So if it's going to what, uh, what, um, uh, how it is, uh, if I rotate it like 45 degrees, it got good point up or down. I don't know which, which, uh, uh, how it will, um, rotate. Um, so, there is another set of properties because what we just saw were the properties you offer, often used. And from that properties pane, you can only use fixed uh, values. So for example, I can add a fixed X and Y property. But what if I want to, to add logic, for example, um, do something with the coloring based on something else that happens on my screen or um, combine, uh, do uh, your exposition based on another label that is also on the screen. So if I move the label that my icon also moves. That is what you do under the advanced tab. And there's actually uh, two places where you can do that. So on the on the top of the screen, just below the ribbon, you see something that very looks much looks like uh, the cell selector and the formula bar from Excel. In this case, it's not a cell selector; it's a property selector. So the properties you will see on the top are the same properties you will find under the advanced tab. And next to that is the formula bar 
where you can, instead of just do, using fixed values, you can add formulas to build logic around the property. Everything you want to know about controls and properties can be found on Microsoft Docs. There is a Canvas Apps re uh, Properties Reference um, where there is a list of controls. And if you click on the control, you also will find a list of all the properties for that control. Giving a description what the property does, where, what it's meant for. Let's have a look at formulas. The formulas that are used in Canvas apps are Excel-like functions. And there is like 75% that is used in Canvas apps are actually functions that come from Excel. The way you use the functions is there's a function, open parentheses, a couple of parameter, closing parentheses. And if you want to do another function, do a semicolon and your next function. This is what the syntax looked like. So I don't know what part of the world you're from, but in the Netherlands, we use a comma as a decimal delimiter. The function reference for, for from Excel is based on how the United States uh, does the decimal delimiter, meaning there is a dot used as a decimal delimiter. So there is some difference about the syntax from countries using the dot or the comma as a decimal delimiter. So what, you, what I just showed you was how it is done in the United States. But in countries using the decimal, the, uh, the comma as a decimal delimiter, instead of a comma separating uh, properties for a function, one semicolon is used. And instead of one semicolon dividing two functions without a, a formula, um, there are two semicolons used. So if you are from a country that uses the comma as a decimal limiter, remember this. And I will sh uh, say to you beforehand, you will make an error with this once in a while. I still do sometimes. I usually have my regional settings set to US, but some once in a while I work on a, a browser session or, or a computer where the regional settings are, are set to the Netherlands. Um, there are ways to see where, uh, where you're, you're making a mistake, but it's sometimes it's quite hard to determine that you're making this mistake. So that's why I want to, uh, I will remember you about this at the end of the session so that when something happens, you will remember that this m could be the issue. Not all functions that you use in Power Apps are from Excel. There are a couple that are specific. Things like navigate that allows you to navigate from one screen to another. That is something that is not in in Excel, but it has to be part of Power Apps because that's functionality that you need when you are building applications. Things like enable and disable, allowing you to uh, disable controls based on uh, logic. For example, allowing you to disable a button to submit a form until all required fields are filled in. Edit data in another data source. That is something very specific and needed in Power Apps. Yes. Sorry, can you mute yourself? Thank you. So, uh, edit data in a data source. Um, Power Apps works always with data in, uh, in other data sources. So there is there are ways to use data that is only inside but the, the app, but um, that's only temporary data or static data. Those are the two types of data that you can make inside of Power Apps. In all the other cases, your data will be 
somewhere else. So you need uh, functionality to be able to update the data in the data source you, you're using. And another thing specific to Power Apps is the use of variables and collections to store runtime data in memory for use while you are uh, running the app. So let's have a look where formulas are used. So there are two ways to do that. There is the formula bar on the top of the screen. And you can use the formula, uh, the, the property uh, field on the right side. I have to say, I usually use the formula bar. Um, you, it's just, you have more room. You can uh, draw it out to make it bigger. Um, and it's, uh, there is some, uh, some extra information that you get there um, if you, uh, uh, about uh, parts of your formula. So if you put your cursor somewhere in your formula, you, you will get some information about the function that you're using and the types of properties that need to be uh, added to make that function work. And also some information about the property that your cursor is currently in. So in this case, uh, I show the navigate function and it shows on top that the navigate needs a target. So where are you going when this function is performed? And what is the transition? That, uh, that you want to show, for example, do you want to fade or do you want to, so it's like how slides are, are from one slide to another, how does it look like? That's something you can also do with navigation from screen to screen. Um, so here you see that transition, it, it gives a little description, the visual transition used for navigation. So you also will see uh, the, the uh, Usually, if you start typing a function, you will see the properties that are mandatory. So usually there's also a couple of uh, optional um, uh, uh, properties, but you will also always see the, the ones that are mandatory. There is also uh, good documentation about all the formulas available in Power Apps. Uh, that this is where you can go. And I actually have to say, this is one of the main things that I have open when I'm using Power Apps. If I'm looking for a specific function that I don't use that often, uh, just to get some ideas about how to add it uh, to the formula that I'm writing. So now you have a grasp of what is Power Apps all about and what are the different building blocks, but how or where to start, because this is not enough. Well, my first advice would be get your own play area. And I know this is something that Rory also advises. So there are a couple of ways to get your own play area. First way, which is free, is the Power Apps community plan. The Power Apps community plan gives you of an, your own environment, add it to your company account where you can use even the premium capabilities like common data service for your own use and for uh, non-production scenarios. So you can use this environment to really learn how to develop Power Apps and my, uh, Power Automate flows. Um, you cannot share any app that is in here. So that's something that you need to take in consideration if you're developing a new application. If it's something that you need to collaborate on with others, the community plan environment is not uh, the environment that you need in that case. But it's a great, um, uh, it's a great uh, feature that, that, that Microsoft gives to everybody who wants to learn Power Apps. But if you have a couple of bucks to spare, I would say get your own Office 365 or Microsoft 365 tenant. So just to show you from a mere $5 per month, and it's I think it's a couple of euros and four pounds or something per month, you can have your own Microsoft 365 tenant 
with SharePoint, with Power Apps, with Power Automate, with everything you want. So this is less than I pay for my uh, Netflix, for example. This is not an, a lot of money and you need only one license to make this work. If you want to collaborate, obviously other people also need an additional license, but if you just want to learn it, make use of that. And there's even a slightly cheaper one, which is Office 365 F3 license. But if like that's, this is $1 difference, and I will say that the other one, this one actually gives you a lot more storage than the F3. So, but just, you can also go even cheaper and have your own playground creating Canvas apps. So the next stage would be use the learning resources. There are tons of learning resources inside the Power Apps, um, inside the Microsoft uh, documentation, but and outside. When you go to make the powerapps.com, there are a lot of links under the learn menu. Uh, if you choose learn in the menu on the left, you get quick links to all kinds of uh, learning resources. Um, one is go to Microsoft Learn, where you will fi find lots of learning files re regarding uh, Power Apps and not only Canvas apps, because there you will also find there learning resources for using models, Riffin apps and Power Apps portals. So there are beginner Power Apps uh, uh, learning paths and advanced. So go through through them to boost your skills. It's really helpful. What I also find really a, a good learning resource is actually two of the templates available from the Power Apps uh, Maker Portal. That's the Power Apps Training Template and the Power Apps Training for Office Templates. And the fun thing about these ones is that you're actually learning Power Apps while building things around Power Apps. The way th those mod uh, templates are created is that you get uh, an exercise and you are only be you are only able to go to the next exercise if you performed the previous exercise correctly. So you actually have to do something. It's not only reading or uh, following uh, steps in the manual. It's actually trying to figure out how something works. Another great resource is this blog. And there's a short link from Microsoft. It's aka.ms slash Power Apps Resources. This is a blog post and it goes, there are tons of links. You only see the first four here. There are tons of links on this blog post that get uh, that help you go to all the documentation uh, that you need, depending on where you are in your uh, journey with Power Apps. So it starts with I'm new, um, but there's also for more experienced uh, builders, there are links to uh, client stories, there are links to all the, the community resources, and they are keeping this blog updated. So if there's something new, you will find it here. And obviously there are tons of resources outside of uh, the mics, uh, what Microsoft creates. Things like blogs, online or in-person courses, although in-person uh, currently uh, not the case. So there are still the online courses, YouTube, YouTube tutorials like the one uh, of Rory, Rory Creates or other uh, community stars like Keith Watling. You can go to webinars. And the thing, the next thing would be ask questions, which is so important if you want to learn something. So my primary uh, uh, location to ask questions uh, would be the communities. So if you go to powerusers.microsoft.com, you, you will find shortcuts to, among other things, the Power Apps community. And this is where you can ask questions and people uh, from the community and um, uh, moderators that 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 look at the questions coming into the uh, to the community will answer your question or will help you get uh, unstuck if you got stuck. But there's also a lot going on with Twitter user groups and events like these. You know, this is where you can ask your question. 
if you have a, a question, you're on Twitter, please ask your question with the hashtag power addicts. That's a, really people are going are looking at that hashtag to help you along. And if you want to be a power addict, just be one because there is no entry level. If you want to be one, you just be one. So user groups, there are a lot of there were a lot of in-person events, but they tend to be more of on the virtual uh, uh, nowadays. Um, but that's also a great uh, uh, a great uh, way of place to ask questions. And if, for events, have a look at the app in the days that are organized by Microsoft. So th those also became uh, virtual events. I actually have uh, presented a couple of those. Um, and it actually goes very well because you will build your own app. Um, but if you get don't understand something, there is somebody who can help you along. So this is basically my session for today. Um, I think I am way ahead. Usually I take a little bit more time about this. Um, can the link shown for formula in Power App be given in chat? Yes, uh, I can. Oh, that's already done. So if there are any questions, please raise your question. You're welcome. Really, no questions? Everybody already knows Power Apps. What is the operation and infra consideration that needs to be taken? Um, Sashi, can you can you can you uh, unmute and? Explain a little bit more. Okay, hi, Rebecca. This is Shashi here. Uh, thanks for the session. Uh, just I have a few queries. Like, uh, suppose uh, uh, for a customer, we want to implement uh, this Power Apps, Canvas Apps. Uh, so, what are the operation and the infrastructure consideration that we need to keep in mind before uh, coming up uh, with this implementation of Canvas Apps? So, um, if there is some infrastructure going on, it, has, it all has to do with data sources. Because the apps themselves actually, uh, Power Apps is a cloud service, so they live in the cloud. So, if you have the surface, the, all the infrastructure is done for you. Um, if you want to use them on, on mobile uh, devices, you need to install the Power Apps mobile app. Uh, but that's freely available. So, from an operation perspective, uh, you need uh, you you might consider thinking about the government because if you have offices in five lines, every person in the organization has a license to be able to create our apps. So usually that's something that you want to take in considerations. But actually, from an operation and infra consideration, there's not a lot that you have to take into consideration. Does it answer your question? Yeah, Rebecca. Thanks. Thanks for that. Um, I think you're. I see. Can we use Canvas apps on the web page? Yes, you can. All Canvas apps can be used both on mobile and from web. So if you create a Canvas app, one Canvas app that is targeted to a phone, you still can use the link to the app to use it from a web browser. Uh, if you didn't make it responsive, it just shows some some gray areas on the side. Um, but it's it they all work in on the web. Uh, Bill, can con connectors be controlled via infrastructure? Uh, Bill, yes, and I have good news around that. Um, uh, so this is more from a, a governance perspective. Uh, but it used uh, there was uh, you have the DLP policies available for you. Um, the DLP policies uh, used to only allow you to uh, basically put connectors in two groups. 
um, one group was uh, non-business data and the other group was business data and you people then were were not would uh, would not be able to mix and mingle but since I think it's last week um, there is a um, a, a way to uh, block connectors third-party connectors as well to say because you cannot block the Office 365 uh, services but you will be uh, able to block for example the Twitter connector people will not be able to use that connector in their apps and flows um, Bill I think that answers your question if not please um, unmute yourself Okay, so before I go to the next question, um, so the data loss prevention policies for uh, the Power Platform are actually something else than the data loss prevention for um, Office 365. Um, and there's that the naming is a little bit of a, a mix up here. So data loss prevention for Office 365 actually allows you to do uh, things in the data used in SharePoint, data used in Outlook, things like that. The data, data loss prevention for the policies are all about the connectors. What connectors can I combine or what connectors can I not use at all? Um, on top of that, you can actually have the data loss prevention capabilities of Office 365 that actually does something on the data in REST on the endpoint. So um, there is, it's just different kinds of data loss prevention policies and they target something totally different. Uh, for this, I would say uh, for docs and references, uh, there is, um, I will look it up, but there are some specific docs about governing the Power Platform, that's where you want to go. Uh, let's have a look. ALM for camps apps are similar to model driven apps or there are some differences? Uh, Sashi, that's Sashi. Yeah, there are some differences. Um, I don't know if you went to the previous session, but uh, Rory sh uh, showed at the end something about how to export and import. Um, but uh, Power Apps also, camps apps also has the ability to add them to solutions, but they're not so uh, this, the way solutions work for Canvas apps are slightly different than they work for model-driven apps. Um, meaning, if you do an uh, importing of a solution, you will overwrite the existing uh, Canvas app. So if you did some changes on the Canvas app, on that, that those changes you will lose. Um, but if you want to do um, um, a mature ALM, I would go for uh, making use of solutions like for model-driven apps. Although I, w I have to say, this is kind of an advanced uh, topic for a 101 session. Um, but uh, if you want to know more about uh, ALM or uh, governing uh, Power Platform, uh, have a look at the Center Facts and Start a Kit. That's a great set of tools that you can use for things like that. Um, uh, yeah. Um, can we create workflow embedded apps, an app that could go through an approval process? Um, can you, GD, can you uh, explain a little bit more about your scenario? We cannot hear you, G. I, I see you are muted, but you're you're you sound very far away. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Okay. So what I'm saying is, um, in an application where I'm having a workflow, uh, say for example, I have to do some editing on the web page, okay, and that has to be approved by someone, then how would I do it? So can I have a workflow, a workflow approval at, uh, whenever there is an editing that is happening on the data? Um, yes, but in that case, actually, I would just go for uh, a, a, an approval flow that responds to changes on the back end. It's that you can also 
uh, incorporated in Canvas apps, but the the easiest way is to uh, to tie to, to tie an approval uh, flow to changes on your data source. Okay. So there is actually there is a blog on the Power Apps blog that was posted, uh, I think, a couple of weeks ago about doing approvals inside of Canvas apps. Uh, by Medi, he's one of the uh, the the Power Apps team. Um, uh, have a look at that. So you go to powerapps.microsoft.com/blog, um, and there's a blog about this uh, subject actually. So uh, let me see. Can we create? Oh, that's one I had. How many screens can we add? Is there a limitation? I'm not aware of a limitation, but you will find at some point, I, I, I know of apps that have dozens of screens. Um, uh, you will, uh, it's only at some point, your app just becomes too complex and the maintainability uh, of your app uh, becomes less. Um, and you have to really think about uh, not tying too much screens together. So referencing to from one screen to another screen uh, because uh, there are some uh, loading issues regarding performance that, that will pop up. But um, so so that's I, so I don't know of a limit, but I would not build an app with hundreds of screens because that's uh, th then you should think about splitting it up in different apps, in my opinion. Um, Canvas, ah, my uh, nice presentation, how to convert mobile Canvas app to tablet Canvas app. So currently there is not really good way to do that besides uh, a, a, a tool that somebody created that you can download from GitHub. Um, that's one, one way. Uh, another way is to just basically create a new app and copy paste everything. And one other way is actually to change the, the, the screen layout from portrait to landscape uh, from just a mobile app. Um, there are also ways to uh, add um, a responsiveness, but those are, it's quite a lot of work currently. So there are things that Microsoft is doing regarding this that will make it a lot easier to uh, uh, to change the uh, to change things like converting from Canvas to model or to, to tablet, or just to don't even have to worry about it. Uh, ha! Nice question, Rory. What was the first Canvas app you built? When did you get your wow moment? Um, the first Canvas app I built was actually when the product just became generally available and there was an application that was way too difficult <laughs> to start with. Um, and that was actually also when I had my one moment. It was a kind of a report app for uh, students of a dance school uh, that had crazy uh, ways to calculate the grades of the students. Um, and that's when, what we did uh, in, for that application. It was done by a custom connector created by, uh, by one of my colleagues. And I was just new to Power Apps. And the reason why it was a wow moment because I could, do, I could do that, I could create that. And I was not a developer. Uh, I just was I, a, a consultant, uh, a business user becoming, ending up being a consultant. Um, and that was like three, to, I think three to four years ago, something like that. So there has been a lot of change since then, uh, but still what you can could create then, that was, uh, that was, uh, that was great. Um, Santos, how to deploy to Canvas a production environment? So environments is a whole different subject. Um, there is also every uh, tenant that you create has a default environment. You have to figure out how you want to use that environment, but be aware that every user in your organization that has an Office 365 license where Power Apps is turned on 
uh, can create apps and flows inside of that environment. So usually the advice is to, to target that as the personal productivity environment where people can create apps and flows for their own personal productivity or maybe for their team or something like that. Um, what you can do, but there, you need at least one license to be able to do that, like an additional license is add uh, other uh, environments next to that. An environment is basically the same as an Dynamics 365 um, uh, instance, if you know uh, about Dynamics 365. And deploying of those, you will you make use of solutions. I mentioned them before. That's a concept that actually derives from what used to be called CRM. You package your apps, your entities, data, and uh, your flows in one package, and you can deploy it to other environments. I'm not sure if there is a, a session on uh, on ALM on the schedule. Um, but if not, uh, have a look at the documentation of the uh, uh, Center of Excellence Starter Kit and the Azure DevOps build tools. Uh, but again, this is not a 101, uh, 101 uh, topic, to be, to be honest. Is there a limitation to use Canvas app on, to Canvas on Entity? Uh, Nick, that, can you explain your question a little bit more? Hi, Rebecca and all uh, friends. I just want to know if I have a subgrid uh, or uh, another property to change, for example, with colored. Mm -hmm. Can Is there any limitation? Because I heard you can use one canvas on, one entity, on, on the entity. Is it correct? Oh, so you mean an embedded an embedded canvas yes, app inside right. of model driven app? Yeah, currently yes. there is a there's a limitation. I think it's on the tab or a page that you can embed one canvas app. So you need to add another tab to add another canvas app. But this is actually something that Microsoft is working on. Um, they are uh, they have said that they want to merge model driven apps and canvas apps more in the future. Um, and then they, um, there is a concept called app pages that will become available where you can, and, and the limitation of embedding only one Canvas app, that will go away. So there's a lot of things uh, coming regarding this, but currently it's, it's, it is only one Canvas app okay, uh, on one form. And next, my next question was, uh, can I use Canvas uh, to change the property of subgrid? For example, the rose color that is not a supported way to um, color it the subgrid. Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah, it's can. a possibility to with canvas. Is it possible? Yes. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that's fine. Right. Lots Perfect. of coloring stuff, and there are things uh, coming also to make that even easier. Uh, but yes, that's that. Those are things that you can do using Canvas. Okay, Rebecca. Thanks for the amazing uh, presentation. You're welcome. Um, ah, Bill, uh, I will, uh, if I'm done with my session in the next wing, I will add a link to the Center for Excellence uh, Starter Kit information. Uh, and that will, that that's a whole set of um, uh, apps and flows that help you set up the governance for, uh, for, the, for the power platform within your organization. And it is actually a great example of uh, of sophisticated applications you can create making use of the Power Platform. Uh, oh, I see also Rory also has a, a link or also added. Uh, can we use Canvas to change property? Uh, that's the question we already did. How difficult it is to build responsive apps. Um, if you understand how Power Apps works with formulas and things like positioning of controls on the screen, it is not that difficult. It's just a lot of work because you cannot work with fixed locations and fixed things like fixed width and height. You actually have to think 
what happens if my screen goes from this to this and when do I want to reshuffle? So, um, and the, the problem with creating responsive apps is you cannot use the preview mode. You actually have to publish the app and try it out. So um, I have built some responsive apps um, uh, and that is just it. It's not, it's just a lot of work. So uh, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's basically it. So the, that for the model drift apps, that's different. Um, and for Canvas apps in the near future, hopefully it will become a lot easier and more out of the box uh, types of stuff. Uh, Rebecca, I have shared a, a blog from Linza where you where uh, he write it that you can embed now three Canvas apps in a model driven form. Okay, so that's uh, been updated then. I, I shared a blog. Uh, okay, thanks. You're welcome. There are some known limitations uh, with the solutions. That's true. Um, I have to figure it out every time myself. The the thing is that with solutions, Canvas apps and flows actually is that this is cap a capability that they added when the product was already general available for quite a while. So they um, so they had to do a, a lot of redo work. Uh, they learned from that, by the way. So uh, hopefully, no. By the way, so in the future, um, they will. Tr this this is something that they want to uh, do do right from the beginning. Uh, but it's definitely something that uh, that Microsoft wants to be uh, as fluent as possible because that helps um, building great quality apps. Uh, this so I. I will do one question. I see the next one is Antti. If you would dissect an app to get started with learning, which app or apps would you dissect? <sighs> That's a good one. I would ju just use one of the templates. Th those are great. Those are have some some extra uh, some extra functionality in them. Just pick one that you think looks nice and just uh, try to see uh, how it was created. To understand the concept of showing rows of data and doing forms, starting with an app from a data source is also a, a great way of learning applications. So um, there are more questions than I can answer today. So uh, I just want to thank you for uh, your uh, uh, for attending this session. Um, I would say I uh, would remember you about uh, the comma semicolon thing regards to region. Um, and my shout out is just play and have fun and don't forget to talk to IT. That is, I do a lot of governance, uh, uh, getting governance started at companies. So I know that your IT department uh, would like to know what you're doing. Um, this is my email address. Um, I'm active on Twitter, Rebecca Albers, and my blog is powersweet.blog. I try to do blogging, but I don't do it that much, but you will find uh, uh, my uh, links to my slide decks and stuff uh, on there. Uh, so I will share my deck as well. Um, and there is a uh, lots of uh, links to all the resources that I uh, mentioned. Uh, with that, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Rebecca. And uh, please remember to share your uh, contact details in the chat so people can connect with you on Twitter, LinkedIn, and uh, follow you on your blog. Uh, and uh, that's uh, a great primer. To, primer. Um, after Rory's session uh, for um, getting started with Power Apps, Canvas-driven uh, apps. Um, and we will continue with Arpit. He will share his uh, top tips uh, for creating uh, Canvas apps. So uh, in the next, uh, after the, the short uh, three-minute uh, break, uh, we will commence with Arpit's Shara Vista's session. Again, once again, thank you so much, Rebecca, for joining us today, all the way from Amsterdam. And we will be going to India now to speak to Arpit. Thank you, everyone.